as she led the NWSL with a record-breaking 17 goals. Kerr still going, and she adds one! And now a goal! Sam Kerr to finish it off! Now it's a new year with a new team in Chicago, and Kerr is back in her rhythm. Kerr off the head, and it's in! Kerr one touch into the corner, she's got two! But Kerr and the Red Stars are taking on the youth movement in Washington as Andy Sullivan and Rose Lavelle look to lift the spirit with a win in front of their home crowd. It's the NWSL on Lifetime. The Washington Spirit versus the Chicago Red Stars, live. And here we are at Moyer and Hendricks Field. This was about five hours ago to the minute. Lightning spotted within 10 miles. The horn went off. Sam Kerr and everybody else and all the fans had to leave the field, unfortunately. But they did come back eventually as we cleared out the complex for nearly five hours. And uh, it's still raining, though. Lightning has not been spotted for over an hour. We are good to go here at a 9 o'clock Eastern kickoff here. And it's going to be a great game. Two teams that need points. Joanna Lohman told me before she came in, just saw her picture right there. She uh, watched some Zlatan Ibrahimovic to get motivated as she came back into the building here, getting ready to go and get warmed up for a second time today. Sam Kerr, one of the best in the business, reigning NWSL MVP will be on display tonight. The Chicago team lost 5-2 at home last week to Orlando. Kerr did score two goals, but she said she didn't play well. Flat out, they need three points. They need her tonight. On the other side, Rose Lavelle, one of the most creative, inventive players in our game, the 2017 number one overall pick by the Boston Breakers, comes to DC, comes to DC via the dispersal draft the last offseason, but she's been plagued by injuries. We'll get to that a little later in the show. But she's available today, playing the last two games off the bench. And she's one of the very talented young crew here they have. And this is just to mention a few of them. But Andy Sullivan was the number one overall pick in this past draft out of Stanford. Ashley Hatch, the number two overall pick last year out of BYU, the reigning rookie of the year. She came up here in a trade with North Carolina. Hey everybody, I'm Dallin Cuff, and it is great to be back as the rain has picked up here again at the Plex. And it's been an interesting last few hours. Washington, these players obviously being home, they retired to their individual domiciles and get set for this game again. For Chicago, they had to get out of the traffic, which was a bit of a problem leaving the Plex as everybody here was cleared out. They eventually got out, went to Whole Foods, got recharged, about an hour in the hotel, and they're back here for a big win. If you want to know, me and the crew went to Mi Rancho, a good Mexican place. Ali wanted me to get a uh, sombrero. I did not, unfortunately. I would have liked to wear it right now. It would have kept me a little bit drier. But anyway, I digress. It's a huge game right now coming up for both these teams. Both teams are not where they want to be in terms of the standings outside the top four. A win for Chicago would put them on 15 points in the mix for the top four. This Washington team, they're on eight points. A win would be huge, getting them to double digits. Let's go up to the ladies that will be calling the match from the top of the plex, Jen and Allie. Ladies? <laughs> All right, Dallin. I think he definitely should have gotten the sombrero. He's too vain for that. <laughs> Good intro there from Dallin. Good details. It has been an interesting day, to say the least. As Dallin mentioned, Allie, five-hour delay and the rain's starting to come down again. I mean, I've got to imagine this is difficult as a player to try to get back to where yeah. you were when you were ready to start the game five hours ago. It was tough on us. Come on. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, on the, as, a, as a player, you develop certain pregame rituals that you go through, and that's where you get into your state of mind when you're going to go compete. Well, this all throws it off, right? But that's why you have that pattern there. What's interesting interesting about that to me is that some players do not adapt well when it does get thrown off. So, yes, you have to re redo that exact same kind of pattern of preparation. But ultimately, some players can't deal if they have to go through it twice in one day. And it's going to be fun or interesting to see who, who's the person that steps up mentally. And this is important, as Dallin mentioned, for these two teams looking to pick up some points before the break. But let me tell you, this is not the first time in this series. We did a little bit of research. Jen Cooper, our excellent researcher, went back and looked for me. 2013 in this series right here. The game had to be called off in the 81st minute. Washington did win that one. 2015, it was rescheduled for later in the season. 2016, I called the semifinal here, went to overtime. Washington won in pouring down rain. 
So precedent has been set, but this one is important. Washington, though, as we get ready to take a look at their starting lineup, did have to make some changes, Allie, with some players out. And we are going to see Taylor Smith making a big move up top in this one and a new goalkeeper. Yeah, Taylor Smith, though, played there for UCLA in college, so she will slot into that right side. We'll see what kind of pace she can bring. Ashley Hatch, though, leading the line with three goals and one assist on the season. In the back line with Rebecca Quinn coming into that center back role, she's been playing in the midfield mostly. We'll see how she adapts. And more than likely, that was to deal with Sam Kerr from the Chicago side that has been hit in form. Two goals last week for Sam Kerr. She's starting to heat up, so Kelsey Weiss could be challenged. Her first start since that 2016 championship game for Washington. Now for the Chicago Red Stars, a lot of big key players out on international duty, and Sam Johnson also out of that back line with injury. Yeah, and that allows Gordon to slot into the center back role, but Emily Boyd, an, another rookie goal or not a rookie I should say she's a rookie but Kelly Weiss is not a rookie right goalkeeper slotting in there for her first start and then Yuki Nagasato is going to play the 10 even though they don't have a true 10 in this role and her she's getting some good chemistry going with her and Sam Kerr up top you mentioned Kelsey Weiss it is her first start as you said not a rookie but it's been a while she had the ACL tear just a couple of months after that 2016 NWSL championship game playing in the W League was activated last season but not until later in the season and let me tell you, you can see how wet it is out there. This is no easy feat for a goalkeeper, much less making your first start of the season. No, oh, I mean, both sides, both coaches are going to say, take lots of shots, take them early, take them often, and test these goalkeepers, see how their nerves and, and their hands handle this weather. Emily Boyd making her NWSL debut, number 15 overall pick for Chicago in the 2018 draft. So she'll be trying to hold things down in the Red Stars goal. Andy Sullivan did not get that call into the U.S. national team. We talked to her this week, was certainly disappointed in that, but expects more of herself. She has a big role here in trying to help this Washington Spirit team right the ship. No Mallory Pugh as she is out with injury for the Spirit. And Yuki Nagasato, veteran for Japan, trying to work her way into a good combination, good connection with Sam Kerr and that Chicago Red Stars lineup. At this point, you just have to embrace the elements. Thankfully, there is no trouble. Some lightning strikes in the area, so we will be able to get going. Just a lot of rain coming down here at the Maryland Soccerplex. Karen Apt waited her time out. Now she's ready to go as well. Longtime veteran calling matches here in NWSL. Chicago at the moment just passing the ball around <laughs> and getting a little extra warm up in. A few brave fans have made their way back in here to take in this matchup, and now it is indeed underway. Sam Kerr, the reigning NWSL MVP Golden Boot winner, got her foot on it early. Chicago will want that to happen often throughout this match. Katie Naughton will be holding things down in the back in a revised back line for Chicago. Mentioned Sam Johnson unable to go. Of course, Julie Ertz out at international duty, a key piece in the midfield. She'd only been back for a couple of matches for Chicago. Alyssa Nair in goal and Sofia Huerta, the other players missing as they've been called into the U.S. national team camp. And look, let's be fair about this. Chicago's missing those key pieces, but Rory wants a response from his squad, and it's going to be difficult in these conditions. But after last week's drumming, if you will, by Orlando 5-2, They've got to step up and show some grit and some discipline. Sam Kerr on the ball here. It Getting it to the end line. It'll be an early corner kick for Chicago. Yeah, and I think you throw all the other stuff out the window. Yeah, you've had a delay. You have rain pouring down, but you are absolutely right. They were embarrassed on their home field last week. I don't think there's any other way to put it. Giving up five goals to Orlando just did not come out with the type of fight that they expect to have. Paid the price for it with two early goals conceded. Corner kick. 
will fall out to Nikki Stanton. Number two passes back to Sarah Gordon, who gets a start in the back line tonight. She'll send it right back into the mix. Alyssa Mott's got her head to it, but up and over. In Chicago, the team getting the early look here, just drifting that one in towards the far post. Alyssa Motts finds herself pulling away. Sarah Gordon with the left peg, just drops that one in behind. And Kelsey Weiss just glued to her, her goal line there, doesn't come. There just hasn't been a ton of impetus or identity by this attack from Washington this year yet. We've talked about those talented pieces that they brought in and, and really no identity is developed for how they want to get after the opponent in the attacking third. They're pretty good in their build-up play. They like to spread the field. And the attacking third is where there has to be more impetus. Washington was able to score two goals in their last match, but the problem was they conceded three in a loss to Houston and a match that just saw a very slow transition when it came to getting into that offensive attack for the Spirit. It seems to be a reoccurring theme with Washington last season. This season it is giving away silly goals, just gifting it to the opponent or being beat for pace. Erin Gilliland had made her way all the way into that corner from her outside back attacking couldn't do much with it this ball could be trouble boy just booted it away ashley hatch three goals one assist on the season tied for Franny Ordega in terms of the goal scoring lead for the Spirit this season. Ordega, by the way, unavailable for this one as she did leave early to join her Nigerian national team for some World Cup qualifiers. Salon. Ball still in the area. Kamo could not get a good clearance on it. Now the shot on the ground, and it'll be an easy grab for Boyd. Stefania Benini taking the shot for the Spirit. And there the impetus on that last one was there from Washington to drive in line, cut that ball back. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jim Cabrera had a talk with his team saying, look, you saw how Orlando scored on the Chicago team last week. Four goals from service coming from the flanks early, sometimes getting in behind but serve that box. And with Ashley Hatch just kind of sniffing in and around that 18, she's very opportunistic and has a great sense, something to keep an eye on. Cola Prico may perhaps see her take a greater role in getting the ball forward for Chicago tonight with some of the players they have out, something she did earlier in the season for this team. Had a goal and a two assists on the season, and all of those points for her coming in the first four matches when, remember, Chicago had no Sam Kerr, no Julie Ertz in the midfield. And they're still missing their true number 10, Vanessa DiBernardo. Casey Short, U.S. International on the back line, although those two players are here for the first time activated this season, so they are available if needed. <laughs> Coaches have to Roll the dice a little bit sometimes at this, when you've got players out, Jim Gabera, certainly a veteran coaching in the women's game. Whitney Church will take the free kick for the Spirit, and Boyd will just let that one bounce out of bounds. Boyd, the 2017 Pac-12 Goalkeeper of the Year for Cal. Finished her collegiate career number one all time in saves and shutouts in her time with the Bears. Gilliland with the throw.
Estelle Johnson to take the throw in for Washington. Sliding over into that right back spot as they've had to make some adjustments on their back line. You mentioned Rebecca Quinn dropping in. I've seen her in the midfield for Jim Gabera in Washington, but she plays in the back line for Canada. Chance here for Chicago, sending it across the ball. Touch toward goal and no problem for Weiss. And with Quinn slotting into that center back role, it's usually because of her intelligence and dealing with the crafty runs of Sam Kerr. And you can even see it there as Sam Kerr just pulls away, gets back on side. She draws the attention of, I believe it's Church there, and that allows that ball to skip on through. Rosie White gets something on it, not enough. Another chance for Hatch. Really putting some pressure on. That back line for Chicago. And I think the center forward, center back matchups are fascinating tonight with Kerr going up against Quinn coming into that role in church and with on the flip side with Ashley Hatch going against Sarah Gordon, Katie Naughton. Sarah Gordon typically playing in an outside back role. You've no doubt played in these types of games before, Allie, where you've either had to sit through a delay or you've got nasty weather conditions. I mean, at some point, I'm sure you just accept certain things are going to be ugly and not up to par. But never, it, any never other way to, to best take advantage, you know, if you're in these players' shoes. You know, as an attacking center midfielder, you know that that ball you're trying to play in behind is going to skip through more often than not. So you've got to take something off of it. Mott's looking for Kerr. Church got to it, but Kerr still tracking it down. And even a ball like that last one, you play more diagonal balls. It gives you better opportunity to connect with it timing-wise. Chicago looking for another opportunity here. Everybody quickly hustling to get on side. This one again targeted for Kerr. Mott will take the shot, but high. And again, it's Sam's Kerr movement that opens us up. She just runs along that back line, establishes that she's onside, and slips in. And then you get that second wave of, of attackers coming in behind Alyssa Motts in that instance. She is so much fun to both watch and talk to, getting a chance to talk with her a little bit this week. And she's saying, you know, I, people ask me, like, was it my best game? I had two goals last week, she said, but I felt like I was horrible. There were so many things I needed to do better to help my team. And you felt it was very genuine when she said that as well. And a lot of it with Sam Kerr is just her hold up play, her back to pressure and the decision making when to drop and help in the build out. As we look at Hatch just battling there with Naughton. Ref calls the foul. But back to Kerr, I mean, with, with with her, the next level is to be able to be a forward that they can bounce possession off of and then allow her to rerun. Because imagine how dangerous she is then when you don't know if she's going to come feet or spin you. Mm -hmm. Right now, she's just so good, and they know exactly what she's going to do. She's going to spin you. She's going to slip between the gaps, and her timing is so good that it's really hard to, to stop. The Chicago team that's in a rough stretch here. Seven straight without a win for the Red Stars. That matches the longest such stretch in club history. Priest Asco nearly had that one picked off by Kerr. The Red Stars do take over possession. Kerr leading the way. The Australian International had that one bounce off of Quinn. And Jen, back to your, your question about what do you do in matches like this with a slick surface? And well, you don't take chances. And that last one was almost a gift by Didasco to play that square ball across the back line that Sam Kerr picks off. Give yourself a chance, especially if you're Washington, because you know you have Lavelle on the bench. If you, you're planning on bringing her in maybe around the 60th minute mark, give yourself a, a chance to go into that tide at least. Colaprico out to Mott, who has plenty of time and space to set up this service. Foul in the area, though, against Chicago. 
Chicago's look dynamic in their attack. They're getting numbers forward. Cola Prico in this instance is the one who springs it out wide to Alyssa Mott, who's pulled herself out. And then they've got numbers in the box. Got four players crashing in on that. Washington unable to clear the first one. One other match in the NWSL this evening. It was tied for a long time between Sky Blue FC and the Utah Royals FC. But in the end, the Royals came away with the win. A New Jersey club still looking for their first win on the season. Had to suffer this one via an own goal late. Tough way to go down. Stars take over. Cola Prico lifting her head. Kerr calling for it. Have to be a bit more patient. Nikki Stanton now. Rosie White making her first start for Chicago. Getting a touch in there. Gilliland comes flying through. Right now, Washington is just struggling to get any sort of meaningful pressure on the ball about 35, 40 yards out. Chicago doing a nice job of moving in, and it's allowing that service to come in and rein in on the Spirit defense. You're going to have to start to pressure a little bit higher on the field to stop that service coming in. It's living dangerously to continue to have to defend against that, especially on a wet surface. Absolutely, and perhaps part of it is that they want to allow that space to be, allow Chicago to come out so they can take advantage of that space in behind with Ashley Hatch's pace. Salon just had nowhere to go with that ball. Dadasco did well to win it back. Long ball looking for Salon. Her first touch angled toward the goal. Allowed Camo to come right back to it. done on that ball as it goes right to Boyd. Ashley Hatch in her first year wearing that Washington Spirit uniform. Great year last season for North Carolina and their run to the regular season championship named the NWSL Rookie of the Year with seven goals on the season. Nagasato got it back through some tight space. Gilliland the shot from Kerr is just over that crossbar. Was there a touch? Looks like there was. A little combination is what sends Gilliland down that flank and then Kerr holds her space really well to allow that angle to be maintained and give herself a chance to get one touch and release that strike, but it's caught up underneath. Didn't see the deflection. Yeah. <laughs> Not much one to be seen on the replay. Nonetheless, it is a second corner for Chicago. And as you mentioned, Kelsey Weiss stayed home the last time. We'll see what happens in this service. Spirit head at first, and then Salon will just send it out of danger. It's the second meeting of the season between these two teams. The first one ending in a draw, 1-1 on April 28th. Franny Ortega scored in the fourth minute for Washington in that one, and then Alyssa Motts came back in the 20th to even things up. Chicago outshot, outpossessed the spirit, but could not get the win. A 
it'll be interesting to see what, what putting Smith up higher on the pitch does for her confidence. I think she's had some rough games in the back line for the Spirit. Hasn't really seen much of the ball so far in this match. And perhaps touches higher up on the pitch will allow her to have some freedom, get that confidence back. Kerr on the ball again for Chicago, sending it through. Stanton will track it down. Nice recovery defensively from Benini. A look at the attempt by Stanton to get a shot on frame as Benini comes across. And they give the goal kick. Estefania Benini, member of the Argentinian national team. Her nation placed third at Copa America. We'll have a chance still to play for a spot in next year's Women's World Cup in France. They'll play the fourth place team from CONCACAF to try to earn that spot. Foul against Salon will give Chicago the ball. Quick restart. Katie Naughton. Now Nagasato. Kamo. Gets the ball about 20 yards out of the goal. Kamo. Back toward Kerr. Didn't have much of an angle to work with. Smith trying to connect with Lohman. Well, one thing that Chicago head coach Rory Dame said would be a win for him to start things off was to get through 15 minutes without <laughs> allowing a goal. Job well done so far for Chicago, and they have been on the front foot through the first 19 minutes and change of this match. They really have penetrating. When Washington's out, penetrating centrally with Kerr, and then when Washington's sitting in, they're getting around the edges or serving the box early from flank space. But Sam Kerr is just peeling away all day long and finding that half yard of space, and you, you think it's bound to bite Washington at some point. Mott somehow got that ball away, nearly found Kerr. With Mott's tucking inside, Gilliland is getting up that flank pretty far. It's going to be an interesting battle to see if Taylor Smith is drawn back and defending most of the half or most of the game or able to assert some offensive pressure herself. Washington and Chicago, these two teams, both just two wins on the season. Though the difference point-wise, Chicago has managed to at least earn a point in six of their matches. Washington with six losses, so it's been a tough start to the season for the Spirit team. Battle coming in here with Benini. She knows pressure's coming and she just steps off to absorb it from White. Draws the foul. Rain starting to come down a little harder once again. And I hope you can hear in the background the drums, the Spirit <laughs> Squadron. Some brave souls did make their way back out into the stands trying to create what is typically a terrific atmosphere here for Spirit home games. Here's a chance for Smith trying to run onto this ball. Great speed for Smith. Nice looking cross, but a bit deep for Salon to catch up to. There they are. Spirit Squadron aren't going to let a little rain get in their way of a good time. That Asco. Washington makes something of this opportunity, not immediately. Colaprico with the takeaway. Cue the Eurythmics because here comes the rain again, and the Red Stars as well. 
Kerr has been all over this attack. Ball across, header! Not on frame, good pressure defensively from Washington, did not give a free look. Maybe it's deceptive, but Kerr looks faster than ever tonight. She looks sprightly. This is the run they spring her in on. She's got a heavy touch, but has the legs to get there and then just cuts his back, drops it over, allowing that extra half second for Mots to get there, but it's still just a little early. You're seeing a connection between Mots and Kerr. Kerr pushing that back line back and then Mots making that later run in behind. Allie, just to add to what you were saying, as Sam told us during the week that what she wanted to do better was hold up play, not turn it over. Well, she turned it over right before that transition happened, and then she flew to the ball, laid out, and you could see that she's angry and playing at a great pace and obviously wants this game. But one thing to watch is her ability to hold up the ball and not turn it over. Rory wants her to do the same thing from the sidelines. Salon will catch up to this one. Thank you, Dallin. Benini now getting free in the box. Back to Benini to touch a little too strong from Lohman. And really one of the first attacks from Washington with numbers four. Benini plays the quick one two with Joanna Lohman. That misses not by a lot. You see it just skips on. Look at the roll of the ball. It's not pure. This is becoming torrential now. <laughs> As you hug your notes, <laughs> keep the notes dry at all costs. <laughs> Nagasato is fouled. That's going to be a card as well, actually. Yellow card shown. Chicago's going to get a free kick. Nagasato gets in a nice pocket of space to Anna Lohman. Just coming back. Wow. I would not give a yellow no, for that. No. I think she just catches her inadvertently on the backswing. Nagasato catches her, I believe. Yes, I agree. Wrong place, wrong time there for Lohman. Every inch of this field drenched as Nagasato tries to line everybody up in front of her. And this is where you just have to get it on frame, make the yes. goalkeeper make a play, follow at all costs. It's like Nagasato is down in a track runner stance there. Now she takes the kick. It is on frame, it's coughed up, and there's a goal for Chicago! I think it's probably wise that Sam Kerr does not opt for the backflip in this type of weather, <laughs> although I don't put it past her to break out her trademark celebration. And you almost feel for Kelsey Weiss in this situation. It's the perfect ball by Nagasanto just to get that low. Weiss has to get down for it, can't get a clean grip on it. And we said get this anywhere on frame and make her come up with the save. She gets the first one but spills it ultimately right into the path of Sam Kerr. Good look there and how she never really gets a hold of that ball. And then Sam Kerr is there just to slot that one home. You said she looked angry, hungry out there. I mean, Kerr hunting down that ball. You have to assume there's going to be a rebound because it is so tough to hang onto a ball. And Weiss did what she was supposed to do. She got her body behind the ball, just could not hang onto it with her hands. So yeah, and as a defender, you can't get beat to that spot that Kerr got to. But how about credit to Nagasanto for getting that on frame? I mean, that is not an easy ball to get. With this weather, the ball is so slick, you can't get a lot of texture on it. So to be able to get it around the wall on frame, really well done. So Sam Kerr, who had two goals in a losing effort against Orlando last week, has the first one of this rainy match. Now five on the season. That is second in the league. Christine Sinclair's six leading the way for Portland. 
and Chicago. Boy, how much would they love to get out of this one with about half of their regular starters either hurt or not available. Taylor Smith, boy, that ball popped right down between the two Chicago defenders. They ran into each other. Smith had a chance. And now the Spirit are in possession. I thought Ashley Hatch was gonna line that one up with her first touch. Instead, she opted to take the touch because Emily Boyd was off her line. You get the feeling more goals are gonna come tonight. It is just too unpredictable out there. Two keepers making their first start of the season for Boyd, her first ever start in NWSL. Kerr looking like she just loves the rain. Yeah, there's <laughs> horses, they call them mudders that love the mud. Kerr's an NWSL mudder. In fairness, she always looks like she loves the yeah. game. <laughs> That's true. She loves all weather. Me? Not so much. <laughs> I'm still hugging my nose. <laughs> I won't let them go. You're up in your ivory tower, Wagner. <laughs> I'm down here on the field. Yeah, it I saw your golf umbrella. It is an absolute deluge down here. <laughs> I would like to point out that the ivory tower has open windows, <laughs> and the rain is coming in through those open windows. It is not up to the standards of Hildreth and Wagner, the normal ivory tower, but you are making do up there, I think. Yeah. You two down there, Dallin, I would say stay dry, but I think we're well past that. I think Kerr may have as many touches in this match as the entire front line for the Washington Spirit combined so far. There he this is. is. This, this is awesome, guys. I feel like I'm one with nature right now. <laughs> You're in you the know game. <laughs> it's tremendous. <laughs> oh, that, was really, that was a good effect there. Dallin peeking into the corner from under the umbrella. You can see the water. I mean, how well this field drains will be tested tonight. As you can just see that ball dying, water flying as players hit the ground. Curves off to the races again, calling for it. Stan did her best. Just couldn't quite get it there. And I think if Rory James was challenging the way his team came out and competed, and duly so, in last week's match against Orlando, he's got to be pleased with the way after a five hour delay, torrential downpour, <laughs> they look, I mean, they're winning the 50-50 yep. balls, right? Like they're showing that edge that he wanted to see. Yeah, no, definitely. I think this is the response that you would ask for as a coach. Sam Kerr, I mean, I know she's still one of the new faces of the squad, but you can tell that she's leading them. I know Alyssa Motz has the armband on. She's been instrumental already in the early goings here. Benini give the spirit a little momentum here. That ball's not going out of bounds. Oh my. Oh, and Benini down. Another yellow card shown. This one against Chicago and Nikki Stanton. Just caught the last part of that play. Saw Benini go down to the ground. And how quickly this pitch is changing from slick to soft and thick. And as players, you have to be able to adjust that. This one just dies in the corner. Didasco converges on it right there. Rosie Wright recovering back. And then the late challenge comes in from Stanton. So a free kick is what led to Chicago's goal. Can Washington answer on this end? Not yet. Bodies just flying. We saw in the last attack by Washington and even there. Andy Sullivan, the number one overall draft pick 
in this year's college draft, waiting to take the kick. Karen Apt, our referee, talking to the coaches. Nick Sullivan may put this one right on frame or try to set somebody up. It's a setup, far post. The shot now from Salon after the fact. Jen, I know the Rory's talked about not having Di Bernardo, their true 10 on the pitch, but I do like what Yuki Nagasanto brings as that 10 and the connection she's starting to develop with Sam Kerr. And as this game progresses, watch as Kerr can push that back line, make them drop, and Yuki Nagasanto can just sit in that space underneath. Nakasato had her first two assists of the season last week against Orlando, set up Sam Kerr on both of those. Took the free kick tonight that caused the ball to cough back up out of Kelsey Weiss's hands and to the feet of Kerr for the game's only goal so far. And it won't go down as an assist for Nagasanto, but it certainly should. And in quality. Here is Nagasato. Sullivan poked it away. Smith unable to hang on to it. Nagasato saw Kerr offside. does test that back line often for the Red Stars. And Kelsey Weiss now is playing higher as that Washington Spirit line pushes up. It's going to be a lot of ground for her to cover if Kurt does sneak in behind in this weather. Aubrey Bledsoe had started every match to this point for Washington. Led the league in saves with 50 coming into this match but gave up a goal to Houston last week where she came way out trying to fill that space and left a wide open goal for Rachel Daly, the NWSL Player of the Month, to poke home. That wound up being the game winner in a 3-2 victory for the dash over the Spirit. Here's Quinn. I cannot imagine how difficult it must be to control the ball on a surface like this. That's why it's better to be an attacking player because your mistakes are punished as much. <laughs> exactly right. Ball comes to a dead stop for Kerr. Who didn't manage to get enough on it to get it all the way through to Weiss. And that's the thing about a pitch like this. Some of the areas are just saturated and slow and others haven't hit that yet. And so knowing where that is, where you got to lift it and where you can skip it, something you just start to gauge as the play evolves. But I'd be hesitant to pass any balls back to my goalkeeper on a day like today because you don't know where those, those little soft spots are. And we've seen several times with several teams in this league this season, errors without a soggy field to contend with in that pass back to the goalkeeper. Didasco will carry this one forward over to Sullivan. Talked about needing to be faster in her decision making and her touches. That could be extra challenging tonight, at least in the touch category. Decision making could still 
be there. Quinn, member of the Canadian national team, will be called in for their upcoming friendly against Germany. Smith trying to get onto this ball. Down to the ground she goes. No whistle. Salon. Smith still down right at the edge of the penalty area. And this ball was sprung there. You see the challenge comes in by Naughton. Hard to tell if it was the knock or the way she planted on it. A slick surface gets hit after the touch. But in that last attack by Washington, you saw Andy Sullivan sit between Kurt Nagasanto. Chicago right now is defending in a 4-4-2. And if they can slip balls between those gaps, between the channels of the players, there are seams for Washington to find some space to play and ultimately get it wide. When they got the ball wide, they then played it against the grain into Smith's run. That's where they can have success. About seven minutes until halftime. Here at Marine Hendricks Field, Maryland Soccerplex, Boyd's Maryland. Our NWSL game of the week after a five hour delay. And coming up on the Ford Halftime Show, we'll catch you up on highlights from Wednesday's match. And look back at this first half, one that saw Sam Kerr score in the 25th minute for Chicago. Benini slicing through the defense, eventually knocked off the ball, but back to Salon. She'll take the shot. Naughton blocked it down. And it'll be out for a Washington throw. Sometimes Benini just makes me smile the way she skipped through lines there and solved that pressure. I don't know that she gets the credit she deserves. Well, Jim Gabera. Loves to sing her praises, thinks she's one of the best tens in this league. I just don't see her on the ball enough. You haven't seen that connection spark between her and a few others. And this certainly is not a finished product for Washington. You've got Rose Lavelle finally just getting back healthy. She will be a key factor in that midfield when healthy. Obviously, Mallory Pugh, don't know the extent to her injury. Knee injury suffered in the last game against Houston. I mean, those are massive pieces, probably two of the, if Rose can stay healthy and continue to progress, I mean, two of the best players on the U.S. squad that this Washington team has been missing, or will be, I should say. Tori Huster also out, and she's been a staple in that midfield. She's been battling some injuries this season. And Ortega, as we mentioned, in this match, not available. She was called into her national team. Like a handball, but no call. The field is gonna <laughs> win the battle in this area. They just need to get it out of that puddle tough for anybody to take control of the ball. Nagasato, veteran of three World Cups, including 2011 when Japan walked away as world champions. Kieran Knapp and Jim Gabera having a conversation on the sideline before play resumes. Quinn back across to church. Loman.
Mo had to hustle to get to that ball and did well. Here's Sullivan. Herman Trophy winner last year, Andy Sullivan for Stanford. Excellent collegiate career for the Cardinal. And she really stormed onto the U.S. scene too. Took it all in stride. Quinn trying to lead Smith and probably thinking to herself, of course, that's the ball that <laughs> continues to roll. That one couldn't hold up for me. That ball is going to run out of bounds on Chicago. Aaron Gilliland, former University of Kentucky Wildcat. Kerr Looking for White. Quinn. Got to see both Quinn and Sullivan as their teams were at the NCAA College Cup down in Orlando last season. Quinn playing for Duke. Tremendous year for the Blue Devils, making it all the way to the College Cup. Sullivan, of course, coming away with bragging rights. Stanford claimed the title. Go, couldn't keep it. Church. Loman had Stan right on her back. It'll still be Washington ball. Washington just not threatening him behind. Not making Chicago honor that as much. Wow, Chicago to squeeze the game and they're even squeezing them horizontally into the flanks. Service makes it so hard though to change it out of those tight areas. Quinn emerging from the pack with the ball at her feet. We'll have a minute of stoppage time added on. This could be a dangerous ball. That one you knew was going to stop. So smart play by Gordon. Would have been no time for Boyd to get there and pick it up. Turn from Hatch. And she is fouled. So a great opportunity coming here for Washington just before this first half comes to a close. And it's such a fine line in this weather to not give up those set pieces in such areas because you think, again, as the field gets wetter and wetter, these are going to be your best opportunities to create something, to get in on frame. And like Chicago, Washington has to follow this up. See if Sullivan can do on this end or Salon, both of them over the ball. What we saw Nagasato do on the other end, force the defense, the goalkeeper, if you can, to make a save on this ball. It'll be Salon toward the goal. Top of the net. And that one does not miss by much. Sullivan feigns like she's going to go. When Sullivan just doesn't get it to dip down in time, bending away from Boyd there. Air on putting that on frame. You want air on putting that on frame so you at least have an opportunity on the rebound. First half whistle sounds and Chicago Red Stars 
have the upper hand after the first 45 behind Sam Kerr's goal in the 25th minute. And Dallin Cuff now with Chicago head coach Rory Dames. Thanks, Jen. Rory, we'll get you out of the elements for here a second on the umbrella. Uh, coming off a tough loss last week, you come on on the road, obviously tough conditions. How do you feel your team played in the first 45 to be up 1-0 right now? Uh, I thought the group worked really hard together. Um, defensively, we've been significantly better, more compact. Uh, Yuki and Sam have done a good job of the pivot up front, so pleased with where we're at right now. Thanks, appreciate it. Thanks. After the break, we'll have more from the Ford Halftime Show. We will show you highlights from Wednesday night's showdown in Portland with undefeated North Carolina. Also, other things were going on around the NWSL. Coming up at halftime, Ford Halftime Show. Ford, go further. Welcome to the NWSL on Lifetime Ford Halftime Show. Ford, go further. Back here at the Plex Halftime in Boyd's, Maryland, between the Spirit and the Red Stars. Now, this is the last NWSL weekend before we take a FIFA break. And the U.S. Women's National Team have two friendlies coming up against China. Jill Ellis announced her squad earlier this week. A lot of familiar faces and names on this list, but a couple to definitely call out. McCall Zerboni gets her second call to the national team, her first last October. She has been dominant in the midfield for the courage. Hopefully she shows up and shows out in this opportunity. Mitch Purse, young 22-year-old, has been great in Portland all season. She gets another call up. She's yet to be capped, though, in the red, white, and blue. And then Amy Rodriguez is back in the fold for the Stars and Stripes since 2015, last time she was there because of maternity leave and then tearing an ACL. Congratulations to her. All right, let's go midweek game. Huge one. North Carolina Courage unbeaten on the road in Portland. And this got off to the wrong foot for Portland. Davinia draws the penalty. And then in the 31st minute, right after that, Lynn Williams capitalizes, puts them up. 1-0. They would keep pouring it on North Carolina Wood. Relentless in the second half. They went through a stretch where they scored three goals in just six minutes. This is the third goal of the game. Lynn Williams, her second, puts it in the back post. And a little consolation in her hundredth appearance. Catherine Reynolds scores her first career goal, but unfortunately for the Thorns, they lose 4-1 at home. That is their third home loss already this year. Usually such a tough place to play. And then just final up in New Jersey, Sky Blue falls at home. Utah Royals went up in the third minute through Diana Matheson. Shea Groom equalized just the 10th minute, but then it was even to the 85th minute. Own goal by Mandy Freeman ends up being a difference. Laura Harvey's crew will go back to the mountain time zone with three points. Coming up the rest of your weekend, Houston is hosting North Carolina. North Carolina, that'll be their fourth straight road game. Only problem is for the rest of the league, they've won all three of those road games and a game before that. So in a four-game winning streak atop the table. And last but not least, to round out your NWSL weekend, Seattle Rain hosting Orlando Sunday, 9 Eastern, a big game in the Pacific Northwest. If you want to watch these games, go 90 the app, go 90.com. If you want to go to the games, go to nwsltickets.com. After the break, more from the Ford Halftime Show. We'll hear from Jen and Allie break down the first half and look forward to the second. Ford, go further.
Welcome back to the Ford Halftime Show. Ford, go further. one nothing. the Chicago Red Stars leading the Washington Spirit here at Marine Hendricks Field at the Maryland Soccerplex. Jen Hildreth, Allie Wagner, a pretty soaked Dallin Cuff down on the field. <laughs> it's Everybody's pretty soaked after that first half. Had a five-hour delay before this one ever got started. Then the rain came pouring down right before kickoff. Allie, what's your take on this messy first half? I, I hated playing in this weather, so I would say that I think the players are actually doing pretty well because we've seen some good moments out there. I thought Chicago started out on the front foot, and they put Washington under a ton of pressure. And, and it wasn't through combination play and, and really possessing in the offensive end. It was through Kerr on the break, hitting centrally, or they were flighting balls in the box from wide areas, whether they're getting end line or not. They were just saying, all right, we're going to challenge you in these areas, and we're going to beat you to the first ball. We're going to beat you to the second ball. And I thought they created just a lot of opportunities out of that relentless type of pressure and waves of momentum, if you will. What about Washington? What do you think they need to do to try to be a little bit more dangerous? They weren't stretching Chicago. So I know uh, credit to the, the defense of Chicago because Rory said, look, we're a lot tighter, and it's true. They were getting pressure in wide areas immediately. They were tight between the lines, but I didn't feel like Washington really stretched them. Maybe early on, and they did a little bit, but I think they need to, to play hatch and behind. Make that a threat so then they can have a little bit of more space in between the lines, and I think, it, and that's where you start to find Benini. That's where you find Sullivan. If, I, if I'm Tim Cabrera, I'm, I'm asking more of Andy Sullivan because I think she is that type of player that can really dictate tempo and break things open and yes, I know she's a rookie and you don't want to put too much on her, but I do think she's someone that they can look to to start to pick apart the opponent more so. But in this surface, it's really risky to play out of the back. And so be a little more direct in your style. Well, you mentioned Sam Kerr for Chicago as well. You should have because she was very active in this first half, looking like she did not mind the rain one bit. No, I mean, she was hitting down the center of the back. This is her fading out to the right, and then she just clips this one over. Alyssa Motts, who's really active in that first half as well, tries to crash in on it. She doesn't have much of a window to even get that in and buys time for a teammate to, allow, to get in on the end of that with clipping it over the top. And then Nagasanta, you said it. She was in a track runner stance. She's eyeing up exactly where she's going to put that. Makes Weiss get something on it, and then Kerr's there to do the rest. I mean, this is, it looks easy, but it's not. To get that on frame in this conditions when the ball is that slick, and then Kerr to crash in on it. I mean, that is the type of leadership you want to see in response from a team that didn't have the best of weeks last. I don't think there's any doubt that Sam Kerr was going to win the race to that ball. And then on the other end, pretty good look here for uh, yeah, Washington. Almost a carbon copy situation. And this is one that Salon, it doesn't miss by much, but got to put that on frame and make the rookie goalkeeper, Emily Boyd, come up with something. Yeah, two new goalkeepers for both of these teams in the pouring down rain tonight. As we take a look at our first half stats, at advantage in shots to Chicago. Most importantly, that advantage on the scoreboard. One nothing, the Red Stars leading the spirit after the first 45 minutes. Who will be able to stand tall and stand out as the rain continues to come down? Five hour delay before this game ever got started today and the rain still coming down. The Chicago Red Stars leading the Washington spirit one nothing after the first half.
Welcome back to the Ford Halftime Show. Ford, go further. We are at the Maryland Soccer Plex as the Chicago Red Stars are leading the Washington Spirit. one nothing at the half. Some highlights from our earlier game tonight. Utah Royals on the road getting an early goal from Diana Matheson. Yeah, and it's Yonzar who gets down that flank, clips this one in with their left. And how about that finish by Matheson? Sliding finish. Just to the air, the defender can't get to it, but Sky Blue came storming back with Katie Johnson getting in behind, clips that one. And that finish by Groom, athletic. Love the cutback ball, the late run by Groom. She had laid out for that one, but got the goal and the equalizer. And then heartbreak there for Mandy Freeman. Again, it's Jan's daughter who flies down that flank. This time it's on the right side. She clips that one in. And then Freeman's trying to make a play on not to allow that to skip across and redirects it past her own goalkeeper who's trying to go to the far. Yeah, your heart goes out to Sky Blue FC. That's a tough way to finish. 85th minute giving up that own goal. They remain winless on the season. Oh yeah, the Macarena going on <laughs> here at the Maryland Soccer Plex. I've never liked the Macarena except for tonight. Oh, you want to do it? We could turn around and get on the camera <laughs> if you want to. Oh no, Jen. <laughs> one nothing. our score getting ready for the second half will be coming your way here before too long under a minute on the clock and we'll have a little more entertainment although i do appreciate the efforts of the fans <laughs> in the stands very much <laughs> if, I, if i'm in the stands i'm saying put on some better music come on <laughs> or you might just get into the mark right yeah. or i'd make you get into it you would <laughs> chicago red stars making their way back out onto the field and as always, Dallin Cuff on the field as well. Down, it looks like the rain has it's let up a little bit now. Yeah, Jen, the rain has <laughs> eased up. It's actually stopped here for the first time in about six hours. Uh, I thought the best part of our halftime show would have been just putting you guys on the camera for Macarena the whole time. <laughs> uh, but I got outvoted, uh, unfortunately. I'm not producing the show Thank here. Goodness. I thought that would be good TV right there. Hey, watching Jen dance, I think, would be pretty entertaining <laughs> in general. If you're anybody Seinfeld fans out there, I envision a lane. But I could be wrong. I, I really don't know. Hey, we're only doing it if you're also doing it. Oh, I'm all in. I'm down. I mean, I'm out here. I'm not soaking wet. It's my These staying are dry bad ideas, people. <laughs> bad ideas. Let's We've been here for 14 hours. We've got to have fun. <laughs> yeah, that's not my version of fun, for the record. Our NWSL on Lifetime Game of the Week getting pushed back. Late night start tonight. As these two teams had to wait it out as well. I mentioned that in the series history between these two here just outside Washington, D.C. They've had some issues with weather before, including that 2016 semifinal game that was decided in overtime. The Washington Spirit beating the Chicago Red Stars in overtime to make their way to that NWSL championship game. No Sam Kerr on that Chicago team, though, and she is certainly making her presence felt, as I think everyone certainly assumed that she would the reigning MVP Golden Boot winner who came over in that blockbuster trade in the offseason from Sky Blue FC. And let's go back down to Dallin. He's with Jim Gabera. Thanks, Jen. Jim, what needs to happen in the second half for you guys to find a goal and find some points out of this match? Uh, well, we need to get in behind their wide defenders a little bit better. and. Uh, so obviously, I hit some shots on goal. I think it took us a half an hour to get a, a decent shot on goal, and uh, that came from a free kick that we didn't, were just a little bit off on, and they got their goal from a free kick. So it's, it's kind of a rudimentary game, you know, get it forward and uh, keep it away from your goal. So thanks, appreciate it. Yep. Yeah, it's easy to, to joke around a little bit, have some fun, because it is a, a very odd situation, and especially as wet as the field has been for most of this match, the rain pouring down. But at the same time, you have to take care of business. I mean, this is three points up for grabs between two teams that really need it. One other quick note between me being a, a clown about the Macarena, I did talk to Rose Lavelle, and she said despite the elements, she expects to play in the second half. And she said earlier she'd give us about 30 minutes. She feels that's the same thing right now. And obviously, given the problems they've had, as Jim just said, creating goals, she's one of those creative players in the league, so maybe she can make a difference. Yeah, no doubt, Dallin. I think we'd all look forward to the opportunity to see Rose Lavelle. She's come off the bench for the last couple of matches for the Spirit. Long time, Allie, dealing with that hamstring injury comes Ashley Hatch. She'll take a shot. Well, it took 30 minutes in the first half. I'd say you might call that a decent <laughs> shot, not a too difficult save for Emily Boyd, but 
a save nonetheless was forced. Yeah, and absolutely test her, right? Put it on her, may, see if she coughs it up. But back to, to Lavelle, I mean, getting her her fundamentals right and the way she moves was a big thing in helping her get healthy again. Here is Kerr. Had the goal in the first half. That was one chance where Benini could have sprung Smith in there. She was going to get in behind Gilliland, and they opt to play to Hatch's feet. Sullivan out to Smith, getting the start a little higher up the field this evening for the first time this season. Was really converted to an outside back with Paul Riley. And the then Western New York Flash a couple of years ago really owned that role last season for the North Carolina Courage. And that's where she's been for all but one minute of this season coming into this match for Washington. I haven't seen her much in this half in that last one where she opts to play the ball forward. You want her the one being sprung in the attack. You want her to take on, especially in these elements. Risk it, be brave, take your defender on 1v1. As you said, advantage goes to the attacking player here. They are waiting for those mistakes to pounce on. Absolutely. Colaprico will send the ball long. Rosie White. Into the area for Nagasato. Good control to bring it down. Nagasato with the shot in the corner, and it's good! How good was that by Yuki Nagasato? Not many players can bring a ball down in traffic as she did, and then she connects with Mott, pulls herself out, and allows that space to holds herself out to keep that space alive and then gets a slot back by Mott. Here she is bringing it down out of the air. Quinn can't get on it. She just holds her off enough and then maintains her position. Slips this one near post past Weiss. Bends it around those two defenders. Both of them are probably screening Weiss as she make, tries to make a play on that one as it goes by near post. That is a thing of beauty. It looks so simple, but there's so many elements of intelligence involved in that finish and that setup. Nagasato had one goal last season for Chicago. That's her first for this season. And she was late joining the Chicago team, was injured for most of last season, was not activated until August, only appeared in six matches for the Red Stars. And I think we all wondered what element she might add because it was a different type of element. You could tell that right off the bat of what she brought to the game. And they never really were able to get her involved last year. She always seemed out of position. They didn't connect with her well. Well, this year, I think she's starting off really hot as she's starting to connect with Kerr as well. But they're finding a pocket of space for her to sit in. Here is Taylor Smith trying to be the facilitator this time. White, as Kerr was all alone. Three spirit defenders around her. Rose Lavelle getting warmed up on the sideline. Expect to see her minutes continue to increase as she works her way back into things. Had her first appearance May 23rd against Sky Blue FC's. 39 total minutes played on the season in two matches. Went 23 minutes the last game as Kerr won't quite be able to catch up to that one. When we talked to Lavelle before kickoff, she said 
Look, if I get 30 minutes, I'm going to be gassed because I am not fit, and game fitness is way different from what I've been able to do. They really ease me back into it this time around. So she hasn't done a ton of high-paced training. Panini. Hatch curling her run around. Panini will go central. Good touch by Sullivan that time. That was almost so pretty by Washington. Benini slinking across the pitch, and that opened things up on that far side. Good run by Didasco. Read that early in Sullivan's vision to find her. Didasco, a good young player as well, 23-year-old UCLA product, who always is very active getting up and down that sideline. Taylor Camo looking for Rosie White, who is offside. For White, just her second appearance with the Red Stars, making her first start this evening. Came over in the dispersal draft after playing with the Boston Breakers last season. Had four goals, one assist for Boston. And as she was offside there, after the play, you could hear Rory yelling down, come on, Rosie. No need to cut it that close. You really do get the feeling looking at the Chicago team, which as we've mentioned, is in a tough stretch, looking good. Two goals on the night this evening, but have not won in their last seven matches. And talking to Rory Dames this week, he was saying, at this point, basically, they're trying to get to those final 12 matches after this next FIFA break when they expect to have Casey Short a little more healthy, Vanessa DiBernardo a little more healthy, plus their U.S. internationals back. Joanna Lohman, always a fan favorite here in Washington, coming off the field, making way for Morgan Profit. Just the second appearance of the season for Profit. Her Pro second year in the league, excuse yeah, me, Allie. And playing against the team that drafted her. Profit was, as you said, drafted by Chicago, played seven games last season, was then waived and picked up by Washington. So maybe playing with a bit of a chip on her shoulder. Terrific defensive player for the Marquette Golden Eagles in college. Driven ball from Church right down Broadway. Johnson frustrated, could not maintain control of the ball. Here's where Washington can really squeeze Chicago, not let them out of their own end. Church back on it. Now Sullivan quickly looking over her shoulder. Smith. Kerr off to the race is Nagasato. Not going to get the connection that time. No, but you can see, Jen, that every time Chicago wins it, their first thought is, can we get Kerr in behind? Everyone looks up and tries to play that. Sometimes they play it too soon. Sometimes it's not on. But that is ultimately their first option in this attack right now. And perhaps more so, would you say, on a night like tonight? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. conditions? Absolutely. You're going to use that regardless of the weather. But specifically tonight, that's going to be your default put the other team under pressure, and it also allows you to be losing the ball in the offensive third. Five goals and seven matches for Sam Kerr this season as she did miss the early part of the season away with World Cup qualifying with Australia.
Quinn. So composed on the ball, even with the reigning golden boot winner breathing down her neck. Camo, a little slip, gives it away to Ashley Hatch. Hatch has scored a goal in each of the last two games for Washington. Some unsure footing on the surface, though. Did not help her out that time around. And she did the hard work. Expect her to release that first half, that chance there. Put it towards goal. Panini trying to catch back up to the ball. Gilliland defended it. Will be a deep throw here for Washington. Now Chicago will take over. Red Stars with 12 points coming into this one. Still very much within distance of that top four on the table. Top four teams go to the playoffs, a place that Chicago has been the last three seasons. Washington a little more work to do as they need to try to make some moves up that table in the second part of the season. Just eight points for the Spirit. And for them to do that, they just seem to need an attacking identity, more connection, closer proximity to each other with the type of personnel that they have. Long throw, a great weapon here from Hatch. That one came up a little short. Didasco. Mo has to kick it out. Johnson. Sheen Benini getting the majority of the touches right here in this sequence for Washington. So much promise coming into the season for this Washington Spirit team, which had a lot of young players, but I think players that everyone had circled as those that would be really crucial, even early on despite their youth, like a Rebecca Quinn, like an Andy Sullivan, Mallory Pugh, just turning 20 this season. A little too much contact going on that time. Foul going against Dadasco. Jen with Lavelle coming over. I mean, a lot of talented pieces. Of course, they're gonna continue to build with this group and it is still early in, in the identity, but I go back to playing to the strengths of some of these personnel and, and where do you find the combinations to then spring your pacey players? When do you occasionally press? We rarely see Washington come out and press their opponent, win the ball high on the field. It's always about building but they still haven't looked dynamic in the final third. We, we know they can spray the field, and in this instance, they're doing the defensive work as Taylor Smith is closing down, Gill and the Benina's coming. And just from behind, Johnson catches. Looks like Stanton there. I mean, that was a glimpse of them almost pressing. No, it's not high in the field, but they decided to go. They saw the triggers, and they went as a unit, and they did force a turnover. Chicago got the... the Get out of jail out of, excuse me, get out of jail out for free card with the foul. Roosevelt making her way onto the field. 
replacing Havana Salon. So we'll see what kind of an impact she can make in this match. Gilliland staying with it. Hatch had a fortuitous bounce and she kept with it. The reigning NWSL Rookie of the Year, left footed shot is blocked. I think you know which direction where <laughs> Dames wants his team to go. Looking for Kerr, her crisscrossing run won't be able to get to that ball as it goes out of bounds. The wrong service there by Cola Perico as she bent it out of bounds, not into the path. Lavelle. There's one of those long balls Jim Gabera wanted in wide spaces. Taylor Smith just unable to bring it down. Lavelle trying to work her magic on the ball. Stanton having none of it. Mott to Kerr, who is always willing to run. Nagasato, <laughs> hand on her head after that one, thinking she had someone else up there with her. I know she wants to work on her, her back to pressure play, but I don't know that there's many better in the league back to pressure with her head. She's got really good timing in the air to lay that off to the oncoming runs. Katie Naughton. Looking for Mott. Targeted her beautifully. Kerr off to the races again. Here comes Kerr in the area. Near post, she was looking far. Could not get the goal. Saw a similar situation last week that Ashlyn Harris saved at the near post. Let's see what Kerr did with this one. No, you're exactly right. Here she is just tucked underneath. Mott's is the one on the restraining line. And then that timing. Watch how she blows by Quinn. Quinn jumps up because she thinks she's going to receive it in the gap. And then Kerr gets in behind. And that is the one. She strikes it with her left, which fades away from the target. Last week, she opened up and hit it with the inside of her right. So it curled into that back post. Wrong surface. A brilliant setup and good connection tonight. We've seen it between Mots and Kerr. Yes, Nagasanto and Kerr, but also Mots and Kerr. Opportunity on the other end for the Spirit. Lavelle has this one go out of bounds. Goal kick is the signal from our referee. Now corner, she points to the corner flag. And Hatch hasn't had great service all night, but Ashley Hatch creates things with her pressure. The way she chases down lost causes or seemingly lost causes, I think they would benefit, Washington would benefit from pressing more as they just did. First corner of the match for the Spirit, Lavelle to take it, bending away from the goal. Smith, back where it came. Lavelle will try it again. Quinn looking back toward Lavelle. She has been busy since coming into this match. 
whether a concerted effort of the Spirit to try to find her or just her work to get to the ball. She's offside on this play. And a recognition of the spaces to be in. She just hangs herself out wide there. Creates a space for that one to drop in behind. Just a step ahead. Allie, why is she so special? I mean, what makes her such a great player to watch? Where to start? <laughs> Vision, her technique on it. I mean, there's, there's few players who can absorb a bunch of information all at once, and she's one of them that can, can understand the pace of the defender that they're stepping, the, the space that is going to be open to if she just takes one little touch here. Those are all calculations that happen instantaneously, and she's got that. Well done from Benini to get to Lavelle that time. Her first touch, a little too strong, but Hatch still there to provide some support. As the ball played into Benini, watch Benini just spin out of three players here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And cuts them. <laughs> Two players, excuse me. Either way, it was an impressive bit of ball work and spin moves from Benini. Had just one goal last season, but just nine matches played with Washington after she signed in June, had a brief stint playing in Spain prior to that, but played for the Spirit 2016, or five goals that year, led the team. One goal this season so far for Benini. Quinn. Gets those long strides going when she wants to move forward. And it's, of course, a game of the chicken or the egg, but Chicago did a nice job of squeezing Washington into that flank. Kerr's going to race toward this one again. Weiss has to come out. Kelsey Weiss, first start of the season. Former Florida State Seminole. Profit plays it back to Church, and now Quinn. Lavelle trying to set up Didasco on the run. Didasco is going to make non work for it. Goal kick the call. It does seem like the Spirit have had a little more pop since Lavelle's come into the match. I think this whole half they've had more pop, and I think part of that has been that they've they've sprayed the ball diagonally, and Didasco's been more active on that left flank getting forward, and, and they're not being so methodical in their approach. They're being more direct, and it's putting Chicago under pressure, but it's also creating space underneath for them. Johnson looking central, Lavelle was there. Talk about her getting into the right space. She just sees it early, recognizes where that is gonna be laid into, where it should be laid into, and then her touch gets away from her. And we talked to her before the match, she said, I was so excited to get back out and actually play. And then when I got out and played, it wasn't that fun because my touch was so bad. You know, when I was doing the stuff by myself, I felt pretty good about it. And then when I got in the high pace, the speed of play was catching me off. And the challenge by Estelle Johnson. Deflection there. So free kick coming for Chicago. Colaprico will be the one to take it. I don't know if they call boots up. Colaprico, pretty ball toward the far post. Just to add to what you guys are saying about Rose Lavelle, we talked to her before the match, and Sam Kerr goes down for a second here. Karen Apple come over. 
But just to finish, just talking to Rose, Rose before the uh, before the match, obviously he's suffered multiple setbacks for the course of the last really nine months since last September, trying to get back healthy with his hamstring injury. So going forward, what she really thinks is going to help, she's worked a lot of her core strength, strengthening her glutes, the other muscles around her. She felt like because of an ankle injury and how she ran, basically it was a, a chain reaction that affected her hamstring to keep getting injured because of how she operated and some of the weakness and weaknesses and her muscles in other areas. So her core and her glutes where she's focusing on a lot of strength training says she feels a lot more stable and solid now and that'll help her prevent injury going forward. That's massive because she's a big piece to the Spirit Squad, but also a big piece for the U.S. as they head into qualifying in the World Cup next year. See, a player that can just unlock defense. You've seen her pace, too, tonight. When she can open it up, she can glide through lines. Cole Aprico. Kerr will be tested right after she was down. She gets back on her horse quickly. A slide tackle coming in from Quinn. Kerr clearly feeling something. Not quite sure what happened to her before. No, but look at that pace. I mean, she's two, three yards behind Quinn, is able to get around the corner. And you saw that stutter step there before she played that ball. Not sure if it was on that challenge that she re-aggravated or if it was on three steps before where I saw her take an awkward step. Earns her team their third corner kick of this match. White got to it. Still bouncing around. Lavelle trying to head it out of danger. It goes to Gordon. Chicago can't believe it. Profit. Just her second appearance of the season for the Spirit gets it to Johnson, who's looking for Sullivan, I believe that was up there. Andy Sullivan, number one overall pick in this year's collegiate draft. Admittedly, a slow start to her season. Talk to us about that on the phone this week. There were a lot of expectations of her coming in and she has a lot of expectations for herself, was a tremendous leader at Stanford. And as you said, has already earned a, an important spot with the US national team, although not called in for these upcoming friendlies against China. Not the right ball there from Johnson. And they just played themselves out of good position there with Hatch and Johnson coming over to this near side. No one else around to help. Back to Sullivan, though. With profit in the uh, in the game now, she can move into a more free role, perhaps more like an eight and get in the advanced spots. And I think she did, or she probably played her best football at Stanford in that position as an eight. Weiss has to play this with her feet. It would not come into the box where she could pick it up. And then a collision here with Mott and Benini. We'll see the yellow shown to Alyssa Mott. And the flick on. Yellow card. The late challenge there from Mott on Benini. She had position on Benini did that is. Alyssa Motts has played an important role for the Chicago team as Rory Dames has talked about players having to step up and play bigger roles than maybe they intended or thought they would with some key pieces out. Kerr tried her best to keep that one in bounds. Benini providing a target for the throw and Gordon there defensively.
Johnson. Over to that Asco. Smith, offside. And that space was so open for Smith. Hatch gets in the seam and opens up and then Smith too eager. Expecting the pass from Hatch one step sooner, certainly. Timing off. Panini, another good turn. Smith tried to duck under it, run onto it. Kerr. Lays it out toward Nagasato. It'll be a deep throw in for the Red Stars. Chicago, remember, looking to pick up their first win since April 18th against Houston. It's been seven matches. The Red Stars have not been able to pick up those full three points. Two goals in this one, one in the first half from Kerr and then in the second half from Nagasato. As Washington has just struggled to get much going in their attacking end. How much concern, if you're a fan of the Spirit Alley, do you have at this point? Just in terms of being low on the table, a lot of great pieces, a lot of potential, but haven't been able to really see it realized consistently yet. I don't know that you have a, a ton of hope that they're going to figure it out, but I think you're confident in, in the pieces they have, if that makes any sense, that you have a ton of talent, so anything is, is possible. I mean, look what Kerr was able to do last week when Chicago was on their heels. Kerr scores two goals. They've got the players that can open things up, can be explosive, but you just haven't seen, I, I keep saying the word identity because I really cannot figure out the way they want to break down their opponent. We don't see them press together as a unit. We don't see them sit off and then try to play on the break. You know, Rose, she can play on the left side, but I'd like to see her come inside, play more of a, a bounce pass off of Ashley Hatch and then spring someone else. So the, the chemistry pieces, they don't, I don't know that they're maximizing some of the players to the, to the best of their abilities. If Quinn's going to be in the back line, I want to see her step up and play make and beat that first line of, of defense. Here's the challenge between Estelle and Mott's going up for it. It'll be a Chicago kick after that foul against Johnson. Mott's has been in the middle of a lot of those. Colaprico. Sends it in. Benini takes it over to the beat of the drums as they start up again from the Spirit Squadron in the stands. Morgan Prophet. Saw Sullivan trying to get out wide on the far side and now Nagasato and Kerr. Trying to link up again. Camo will play this ball back to Emily Boyd. Boyd starting in place of US goalkeeper Alyssa Nair. So far, hanging on to the shutout. Certainly, it's got to give her some confidence to this point. Boyd in her NWSL debut. 
Third substitution. And moments ago, this was when Benini spun her defender. This is one of the problems with Washington. And we didn't get the final look at it there, but all three forwards are running away. So spacing as they're trying to build, figure out where to go. She's done some nice things on the ball, Benini. Well, just different layers. So if she spins, you gotta have someone at least checking. All three are running away, and there's a huge gap opening up, but Chicago's just absorbing all three of those runs, and they're saying, thank you very much. You played right into the space we were going. Have someone else pulling off that line. It's just kind of that understanding of counter movement between the different players. Mallory Eubanks replacing Benini now for the Spirit. That's their final change. This is as active as I've seen Yuki Nagasato for Chicago this season. Really has been buzzing around in the attack for the Red Stars. Has her first goal of the season. Sullivan a step too late to come on to that ball as it goes back in possession of Chicago. It's been a long day <laughs> for these players. I thought you were gonna say us. <laughs> for everyone here, <laughs> we do appreciate all of the hard work and people up here in our ivory towers, <laughs> Dallin referred to it earlier, holding the tarp, trying to keep our notes dry the entire first half. Very appreciative of everybody's work on our crew on a long day here today. mentioned that in this series there have been disruptions due to weather before when Chicago and Washington have met up here at the Maryland Sportsplex but this was an important match to get in I think particularly Washington hopeful to catch a Chicago side coming off what could have been a pretty deflating loss giving up five goals to Orlando last week missing their U.S. internationals missing one of their key defenders on the back line and Sam Johnson who picked up a, an injury in training this week. But the Spirit unable to really take advantage of anything. And Chicago with the response. Here's Eubanks. Lavelle. Gets the cross through. And remember that August 25th, how special is that gonna be? This Washington Spirit team is gonna get to go test out the brand new Audi field. Take on the Portland Thorns, that one at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. I'm sure the Spirit Squadron will travel well to that one. Her. Late offside flag goes up on the far side. If we could, let's let's look a little bit big picture as the teams get set for the second international FIFA break coming up. The various players going off to their national teams, some for some World Cup qualifying matches, some for friendlies. U.S. will be taking on China in a couple of matches. Any big storylines to you or things that you'll be watching as NWL will come back after that June break? Chicago is one to me to keep an eye on in Houston as well. 
see if they continue their ascension and you almost say stealing points, but it's not. They're very specific about how they go and get their results. But I want to see Chicago, where do these, how does Rory continue to put these pieces together? Because with her, it's back with Casey Short, you know, how does that shift things around? With where does Nagasanto end up? Where does where to end up ultimately when Di Bernardo's back, when he has his full complement of players and, and how do they then progress with this new style of play, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, I think they would say there have certainly been moments they have not been pleased with the way that they have played through this first half of the season, Chicago, but they pick up these three points on the road here. That gives them 15 on the season. That puts them in a tie for fourth place. Now the tie break would keep them out of the top four in fifth at the moment, but I think that they would take that with the pieces that they've had out and feeling like they can, they're in the position they need to be in to try to make a move in the second half of the season. Absolutely, and when you're shifting a, a, a style of play, that's massive. And to do it without, as you said, all of your, your key personnel, it was just a big ask and, and they've stuck to their course, which you know I really do respect. So many coaches say, we're not getting the results, we're gonna go back to the tried and true methods that we've had. But Rory is trying to layer in and a certain amount of discipline, get the discipline, the defending discipline back. Second corner kick of the match as the rain reappears and Rose Lavelle will send it in for the spirit. to the Houston Dash too, Allie. I think that match that they have tomorrow, hosting first place North Carolina at 6.30 Eastern time and catch that one on Go 90. I think people should tune into that one because Houston's won a couple in a row and North Carolina is missing at least half their lineup. It's gonna be, if ever there was a time to try to take advantage of the courage is what I'm saying, this might be it. They've had a couple players dinged up with injury. They've got a ton of players called away to the U.S. national team, including McCall Zerboni getting her second ever call up. A midweek game. Chicago looking to just put this one to bed. Two goal lead, would love to hang on to the shutout. And snap that stretch of seven matches without a win. Get that monkey off the back for the Red Stars. Lauren Kasky getting ready to check in, replace Alyssa Motts for the Red Stars. As we are approaching stoppage time, I think Alyssa Mott's had a fantastic game. Part of it was just battling and, and the work ethic to make those runs into the box, the late runs, to challenge for 50-50s. Minimum of three minutes of stoppage time added on. Can the Spirit do some damage? Some extra time on the clock. I know Mallory Eubanks hasn't had much time tonight, but I really liked her insertion for this Washington Spirit. Last week now, and with Rose Lavelle coming into the center of the park. Shot taken from distance. 
Those bounces can be nasty on a wet surface, and the rain has picked up again, but no problem for Boyd. And Hatch again, the one to release it. If Boyd can hang on, keep the clean sheet here, it would mean she's just the fourth rookie keeper in NWSL history to earn a shutout in her debut. And here I was, Allie, asking you about what to expect at NWSL coming up after the break. I know that you have your sights split at the moment between NWSL and your gig coming up. I want to wish you the best of luck as you get set to call those World Cup matches. And Hatch may give us something to call right here. How about Boyd? Rosie White now with the chip at its high. Boy, they about messed up my send up for you there. Or Eubanks, <laughs> excuse me, Eubanks. It's all right. It's Hatch <laughs> who's creating this moment. Again, she's been the one that's provided that offensive impetus for Washington. Boyd comes out hard, well off her line, covers Ooh. it so well. And you can see Hatch just trying to lift it over there. Boyd got smacked in the face, too, and then held her ground, quite literally. A good timing there. And I like the roll. Eubanks had the look after, too. But we are going to miss you. I we wish you the best. <laughs> to say, thank you. Don't replace me. Just temporarily, my friend. <laughs> Weiss. That's living dangerously with Sam Kerr dancing right in front of you. Well, end end action happening here in the stoppage time of this one. The whistle does sound, and the Chicago Red Stars are going to walk out of this one, go home happy into the break as they pick up the win, the three points, and the shutout. A massive response from Chicago. Wasn't sure after last week against Orlando how they would rebound, especially being shorthanded with some of their players off on international duty. But I think this team looked more like a team today than we saw last week. I thought the energy was there, the defensive commitment to shift together, and then the, the tactics to, to hit Washington where they are vulnerable with pace in behind. And of course, when you have Kerr in your arsenal, you're going to take advantage of that nine times out of ten and to weather the storm. <laughs> Again, quite literally, yes, they had to weather the storm. And Sam Kerr getting the scoring started for her team in this one. She's with Dallin. Thanks, Jen. Sam, congratulations. Great win. I know you guys needed that. It's been since April 28th to get the win. How important was it to have it, not just the three points, but going into a FIFA break with two more weeks off to get a win right now? Yeah, it was really important for our confidence and the group, and um, that's my first win as a Chicago Red Star, so I'm pumped right now. And in terms of this uh, situation, obviously not easy. You guys got warmed up, ready to go. The horn went off. You come back five hours later. But you seem to enjoy playing in these conditions in the first half. Do you like this? I like the rain. It makes it nice. The ball's crisp, but um, it wasn't ideal with the, with the break, but both teams came out and knew what we had to do, and it was a good game in the end. Physically, you kind of had some, looks like you had a little bit of struggles late. How are you feeling physically? Yeah, I need the break, actually, after the Asian Cup and all that. But, yeah, my ankle just kind of gave way, but it will be fine. Hopefully, the break is all good. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Enjoy the break. Thank you. We certainly hope that Sam Kerr will be certainly fine after the break <laughs> as she gets a little bit of rest. I think she's earned it. Just just gave out a little bit her ankle. She doesn't need that. <laughs> It'll be she's fine. Got a pace without it. <laughs> well, let's get back into a little bit something that you said where it's just a better overall team effort from Chicago. Just break down a couple of moments maybe that showed that to you tonight. I thought defensively, I mean, Rory hit on it too at halftime when he said the pivot was working well between Nagasanto and Kerr. And you could see it in their defensive pressure where Kerr would step, Nagasanto would drop, and vice versa. If one was caught out, the other would drop in. There just seemed to be more t team cohesiveness and tightness between the lines that we didn't see against Orlando. And they really put pressure in the right areas to deny service. So I thought defensively they looked really cohesive. And that allowed for them to spring offensively because you're close to each other. You can make one or two passes to break initial pressure from Washington. And boom, before you know it, you're on the break yourself. What about 
about for Washington? I think you said this during the match that they did look better in the second half. What was better? What needs to continue to get better? dynamic movement, dynamic ball uh, placement. Uh, the way that they sprung some players was what started to open Chicago up a bit more and they looked like they were they were changing tempo. Otherwise, from Washington, it's too easy to defend. It's You get to sit in and just watch them slide it side to side and you can always put pressure on the ball. They've just got to go up tempo more often and get some different lay layers and nuanced runs to pull apart the opponent. Half of this game is toying with the opponent, pulling them out of the exact space that you want to get into, and you just don't see that enough with Washington. Well, we saw Sam Kerr get things started early in this one off a beautiful free kick from Yuki Nagasato as the rain certainly made its presence known throughout. It was wet out there, but that did not stop Kerr. It did not stop Nagasato. She had a fantastic game. She's lining this one up. All you have to do is put this on frame, make the goalkeeper make a save. Weiss does that. She gets down, but she spills it in the end right into the path of Sam Kerr, who is just feasting on that moment. She gets off the gun, beats her defender to that spot, and then easy put away in the end. So one nothing was our score at halftime after that goal from Kerr. No backflip this time, just a little <laughs> slip and slide on the wet ground. And this is a situation where Kerr just reestablishes herself to get back on side. And then Nagasanto, I mean, that is so good to bring that down in traffic and then pulls out, opens up that space for the ball to be laid back into her path by Mots. She's got Quinn draped all over it, but she uses her body well. Mots then, smart playback, doesn't force it. Slots that one near post against the momentum of the goalkeeper. Uses those two.